right, today uh, what I want to do is I want to cover a tutorial uh, for my digital tech class. We do a lot of different things in digital tech, one of which is bridge building. Um, so we're going to use West Point Bridge Builder and I'll show you just some handy tips to get started and get going on there. Um, plus my guidelines to not getting yourself in over your head. First thing we want to do is we want to start it. We got the little start button. If you've installed it, you may wonder where did it go. Well, it's called West Point Bridge Builder, so you want to start by typing out West, and then you should see it. I would use West Point Bridge Designer. We're on 2014 right now. I'm sure they'll release 2015 any day. Who knows when, but for now I'm going to use it. Um, and you have the option to use the main one or the one that's for older computers. Uh, try the main one first and only go to the older computers if you have to. So this is going to open up Bridge Builder, and uh, there are some key steps you don't want to miss when you start doing your bridge. Um, and then, of course, it really depends. If this is for an assignment, you might have certain cr uh, criteria or guidelines that you have to follow. If you're in my class, there are some, and I will go over those in this video. But understand, if this is just for your own fun, don't worry about it. So West Point Bridge Designer, while we're waiting for it to load, it is a free program. So it's worth taking a look at. Um, now. Uh, design tip of the day is I love to tell my students there's this actually thing called words on here and if you read it you might actually learn something but I'm gonna go ahead and close it now um, my recommendation is if you're getting started the first time create a new bridge design this is what I have all my students do it uh, here are the design requirements all listed out but the main idea here is you're trying to make sure that the bridge doesn't collapse and you're trying to keep the price as low as possible so that's really our two main challenges one to get the bridge to work two to try to see how cheap can we get it without it failing and so we're trying to you know save some money here and um, the second option, by the way, we can navigate using the next button. The second option is, uh, do you have a local contest that you want to enter? And uh, some people will put on contests related to this, in which case you will either receive a four or a six character code. I don't participate, so I just move along. Um, you also notice deck elevation. You may want to experiment with different deck elevations. However, if you are a student of mine, you will be doing 24 meters. I like everyone to have the same deck elevation. But I do allow for a few options here. Uh, again, this is up to you how you want to do it. A standard abutments would be for a truss bridge, either a deck truss or a through truss. Arch abutments is to create an arch bridge. You can see part of the arch. Now in the arch bridge, you can do four meters or eight meters. Okay, so uh, in my class, this is just my class, and you can do any, you can do 24 meters if you want. It's a pretty extreme arch. Um, and if, as you play around with these, you see 24 meters, the site cost is 91,000. If we go down to eight meters, the site cost is 80,000. So it costs 10,000 more to do the other kind. So there's always gonna be a trade-off. I'm gonna use standard abutments this time. And then for my class, I don't have them do piers and I don't do cable anchorages. But if, again, if you wanna try it out, go for it. Have fun with it if it's not part of an assignment. If you're in my class, you will choose no pier, no cable anchorages. Next. Deck material, you get to choose. I'm going to use the high strength just to try it out. Uh, this is costlier, so that's 66000 and it's 62000 so the difference of $4,000 to go for the higher strength. Uh, that might be worth the cost. Loading is up to you. I, all my students have to do standard loading. And then from here on out, it's kind of optional. However, it's very important, if you haven't done this before and you haven't tried a bridge design, you may want to use one of these templates that are available deck or through truss, how Pratt or Warren. I'm going to use Warren just because I've decided to use Warren. But what you'll notice is when you use a template, by the way, you can put your name on here. So I'll put my name on here. And then uh, at this point, you can keep clicking next. And here's the, the require. This is the instructions as to what you do. And this is actually not, not a bad idea looking at. So you're going to click the finish but button to activate it. You're going to draw the joints. You're going to draw the members. You're going to run the load test. And it will test the strength of your design. And then you strengthen any members that fail. And then you would optimize the de design by minimizing its cost. So let's talk about that process. First of all, you're presented with the member or the joint tool. It's already selected. These are it, four tools, very simple. This allows you to put in joints, and I'm just putting them on the faint circles. So I just go through there, and then once I'm done there, I'm going to want to draw in my members. And I'm going to stop there for the, the joints. You do not put the ones underneath. Next, I want to choose the members. 
And you get, uh, you get to choose. Do you want to use carbon strength, high strength, out low alloy steel, or quenched and tempered? I'm going to try this one. I don't normally do, so I, I think it's worth a try. The other thing is you get to choose solid or hollow. Solid will be more expensive, but hollow will be a little weaker. I'm going to go ahead and do hollow because I like to try it with hollow. And then on here, um, you could do any number of sizes. My preferred method is to actually fail the first time on everything. So I'm going to go down to 100. Actually, I'm going to go even lower. Um, this may be a little bit excessive. I'm going to do 80. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and draw the pieces in. You will note I didn't have to go in each individual one. If there's a long straight line, you can do it that way. And then you just plug them in. And then this takes a little bit. So I think what I'll do is I'll speed it up. Okay, I've drawn all the members in. Uh, one of the things you might want to look at is load test results. You might be tempted to ignore it. Let me resize this screen a little. There we go. Load test results is a very important uh, window to look at. This is going to be extremely helpful. You'll notice if I click on any one of these, they get selected on the window over there. So I selected four here. You can see that as piece number four. So we can look at all of our pieces and we can analyze them piece by piece. So we're going to go ahead and run this thing and see what happens. Now, I would expect it to, to crash at the beginning, and so that's to be expected. In fact, I'm almost upset if I don't break everything. Everything collapsed. Everything failed. Okay, so we're going to change this. Okay, so by the way, if it's too much compression, they've colored those red. Too much compression, they will buckle. Too much tension, and they will snap. So what I want to do is I want to look at the load test results. Now, did you see what I just did? I just clicked on a bridge member. Before I even did that, I clicked this little area that says compression force strength. What that is doing is sorting them in order of load test. Well, now that you know how to sort all of these pieces, what we're going to do is select them all. Now, there's a lot of ways to select. Uh, one of the things you can do, control A. Uh, hold down the control button, type A, that selects everything. And if you look here, everything failed, so that's a great way to select everything. The other way you can do it is you can do it the really slow and painful way. Click one at a time. Here you go. And then you'd have to hold down control while you did it. The other way you can do it is you can draw a little box in your window with your mouse. You just draw a box around them all with the mouse using the left button, and it selects them all. Or you can click on the member board. By the way, there's a little tip at the beginning that told us this if we had read it. Uh, so we click on the top, we scroll down to the bottom. Now before we click on the bottom, we hold down the shift key and now we click and bam, there we go, we get all of them. So that's called a shift click and there's a control click can let you deselect or select. Alright, so many ways to select your pieces. Pick the one you like best, try different ones. Now, uh, look at our cost, it's 114. This is iteration one, we just built it once, we haven't done any mods. Now we're going to modify it. Now we can do it this way. We can go up here and click the next size up. Or what I like to do is click this one, which means increase size of selected members. And that way everything gets larger by one. Now this is the load test, and we load test it again. And now the middle's um, buckling, and we have some snapping going on here, 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 and a couple of those. We go back to the load test results. Now the end result after doing all that modification is there is one piece that did not fail. And so that piece is as slender as it can get. Okay, so we just made it. It was a 90, uh, 90 millimeter size bar, and it's right there. So what I just did there, you probably didn't know, but I held down the control key and I clicked that right there to deselect because it did not fail. The other thing is you might want to look at what number this has on the tension uh, load test result. Tension divided by... Uh, strength and you want to see what happened compression divided by strength now the remaining ones still failed so we make them stronger now this is the process we'll proceed through the rest of it and uh, keep failing it almost looks worse now than it did before but we have more pieces not failing so I'm just holding down control clicking every piece that did not fail and then so we're still highlighting the ones that did fail and we just make those stronger now we're just gonna follow this process through until no more pieces are failing. Make them stronger. So every time we make a change and we do a load test, that is called an iteration. We are on iteration number five.
Now, you could wait till this thing bends or the truck crashes or whatever, but one of the things I rec that I recommend you do if you want to go really fast is just check status right away. Click on here, make your changes. Now, it's getting a little, yeah, I guess we can do this. I'm just going to keep doing the process of deselecting ones that don't fail each time we have fewer items to fix. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this into fast forward mode so you can watch me doing this process till it stops failing. Now I'm going to come back here. I'm going to talk about this part here. So right now we're getting all this big divide in between these pieces. So you notice I've highlighted these. One of the things I'm going to do to get the red ones is I'm going to hold down control. I click control. That allows me to select this one without selecting the ones in between. Now while I'm still holding down control, I now hold down shift. And now I click on the bottom. So we can do combinations of shift and control back and forth. And we're doing that mainly because now we're getting to the part where fewer are failing. And uh, the other thing I can do is, um, yeah, we'll just keep doing it that way. Now, one of the things I want to point out here is that zoom in a little bit on here on the tension for strength. You look at these numbers, and I'm not going to flat out say it to you, but if you look at them, you'll see something about these numbers that is different from everything underneath it. Okay, so that's kind of what we're looking for. Remember, we're trying to get it as cheap as we can without failing. So is we just keep going, and if they can be weaker, we make it weaker. If it has to be stronger, we make it stronger. Here we go, last piece to strengthen. Click on here, status is green, no failure, truck drives across. And that's about as cheap as I probably can get on this particular one, but if I think I can do something about it, I might wanna go back to the load test. And really what I wanna do is analyze these numbers here. All right, if these numbers are small numbers, then we see if we can maybe change those. If you look here, really big numbers along the bottom, we get to the part where we see, oh, this is 0.04, but if you look over to the right, that's 0.76. We could see if we can make that one weaker and see what happens. And notice the status means it fails. And let's see what happens when the truck tries to drive across. Pretty exciting, isn't it? And that's all we need. Okay, failure. So if that one failed, there's probably nothing else we can do. This is our lowest price. Now the last thing I want to say is I want to encourage you if you're doing bridges, this is just one type of material. And so you may want to try the same process on a different one, save each one and then compare the two. You may find you can get an even cheaper bridge depending on how it is you set it up. So good luck with this. I hope the best for you.